For the final video in this class, I want to introduce just a couple of the more important microbially induced sedimentary structures. Um, partially because if you're going to summer field, you, you will see some of these structures in your, in your mapping area. So these features all fall under the broader category of a microbialite, which is a rock formed under the influence of microbial activity, such as trapping or binding of sediment or direct precipitation of minerals. Assemblages of microbes can form these sticky films called biofilms. A biofilm is just a mixture of bacterial cells itself as well as this sort of gooey material called extracellular polymeric substance. So this, the, the details are not that important, but the key thing is that sticky biofilms can influence sediment deposition and properties in a variety of ways, most importantly by stabilizing the sediment surface and making it more cohesive. So microbialites uh, form primarily from the trapping and binding of sediment by these biofilms. It's kind of a cycle like this. So sediment is deposited on the bed, up in A in the upper left, and then the filamentous bacteria will grow around it to trap and bind the grains. Bacteria can actually move, believe it or not. So first step, we have trapping and binding of bacteria. In carbonates, at least, chemical changes beneath this biofilm beneath this sticky, gooey layer um, can promote precipitation of aragonite. So you get these little needles of aragonite that you can see in, in picture E. And so um, that early cement formation is really critical for allowing microbialites to grow and build upwards in carbonates. Ultimately, the aragonite needles become microtized. They kind of get welded together into this sort of um, consistent layer, these, this thin cemented layer that you can see in, in G there. And then the process can repeat with deposition of a new sediment layer and trapping and binding and precipitation and, and welding together and so forth. So the most common form of, of microbialite that you would encounter is something called a stromatolite. It's just a layered organosedimentary structure with these thin laminations and an overall shape that can vary from sort of dome-shaped or hemispherical, columnar, branching, or even conical. In stromatolites, trapping and binding is, is of course, important. The, the, these layers form from sediment being trapped by the biofilm, but, but the lithification by carbonate precipitation is also really critical for this upward growth of the stromatolite. non-laminated microbialites that often have this this clotted appearance these little sort of blobs of darker and and darker gray and lighter gray colored material are called thrombolites thromb is just clot and so the the, the clotted appearance gives them this name of a, of a thrombolite in in these trapping and binding is probably less important and precipitation within the biofilm um, dominates the deposition instead Thrombolites probably form in areas where there's lower sediment input. They're more common in subtidal environments, also in, in, in reef environments in, in many time periods. Microbialites can also form in siliciclastic rocks, but they don't produce these large structures that have relief, like in a stromatolite or even a thrombolite. So uh, because, uh, likely because the carbonate uh, cementing step is absent from the process. So in siliciclastics, you instead get these little structures like wrinkle structures here, just from the trapping and binding of sediment by the biofilm. So as their name suggests, wrinkle structures are just these low relief wrinkles on the bed surface. They can look a little bit like wave ripples potentially, but wrinkle structures are smaller and rounder and certainly much more irregular. The crest, there's not really a continuous crest, it's just like a bunch of little wrinkly bubbles all over the surface. So all of these microbialites, like stromatolites, thrombolites, and wrinkle structures were very widespread, common, found in many depositional environments during the Precambrian, and to some extent during the Cambrian as well. But following the evolution and the expansion of animals in the Cambrian, microbialites became much more restricted and would really only show up in conditions that would be stressful to animals. So for example, um, you know, high salinity tidal flats or low oxygen environments, lagoons, places like that. Um, so 
in the Ordovician and later, microbialites are, are really restricted and actually can be a pretty good indicator of stressful conditions in terms of salinity or oxygen or whatever. Um, but remember that their environmental significance differs greatly depending on whether you're looking at rocks older than the Cambrian or including the Cambrian, when microbialites are widespread in all environments, or whether you're looking at rocks Ordovician and more recent when microbialites are very restricted just to these more stressful or marginal, um, non, not normal marine environments.